That's a start to a video, huh? Yeah, that was the biggest carp I ever shot in my life. And in doing so, I only wanted at this moment the meat. I could make a, a fish broth or fish stock out of the skeleton. Could give it to the chickens, could make fish emulsion with it, but this time I think I'm gonna put it in a shallow grave. And I got a number of things that could work together for me right now, which would be beneficial. One is, sorry, this is still heavy. Oh, carrying that. Whew. But one is gonna be, I got two buckets of that fish stuff right now. Another thing is, when I did my compost thing, um, I just got extra, extra compost stuff. So I think I'm gonna use some of that too. Cause here's still this mound. I gotta, I gotta finish that, I'm 15 bricks short. But, got a good amount of this stuff. Some of it's better than others. I might sort through it a bit. But if you guys watch my channel for any amount of time, try to view everything, or as much as I'm able to, as a resource. Or if you get it for free, perhaps a free source, but not as trash or garbage or something that needs to be discarded. Up here is a section of my propagated plants. A lot of those in the back row there are cherry bushes. And while I could have them available to send somewhere else, somebody else's homestead or property, the more cherry bushes I have growing on my land, the more I can propagate too. So I might take some of these and some of this stuff here growing in five gallon buckets, um, particularly the service berries which because they're root bound and in these buckets, they're still alive, but they're very stunted. So if I can plant those in a nice row, we get some good stuff going. So I think that's what I'm gonna do. Plant a row of service berries with a row of cherry bushes at the bottom. That could work well together. So for these service berries, the biggest ones don't even reach six feet coming out of the pot. Um, they would definitely be taller than that if I would have planted them in the actual ground. But I got six five gallon buckets of those. They have multiple ones in each, that's fine. They'll kind of spread out from the root anyway. So I'm gonna plant a series of those. And then for these bush cherries, got seven pots of those and I chose ones that were all from last year. I did not choose the ones that I'm propagating now because I wanted to make sure they had taken. So if I put these in these plants, or they put these plants in these pots last fall, and they've lasted through the winter, and they woke up this spring, and they're doing well, that lets me know the root system is established, and they'll be ready to go. So some of these trees here are going to be thinned a bit. I'm just going to have to be careful when I do it later. I'm already starting to build stuff underneath them. But I'm going to thin out a number of these guys. Just the different stuff coming through here. Ooh. Look at that, those tasty greenbrier shoots. To me, they're almost like asparagus, meaning that they grow similarly and they're readily available here in the spring. But I'm gonna pull back a bunch of this stuff, got a shovel out there, dig a series of holes deep down, drop a fish carcass in each hole, and then when I plant these, amend it with a little bit of that compost stuff, give them a good water, and oh, I got mulch available, so maybe I'll mulch them in too. Here's kind of a before photo. Or video, I just meant to be for look. And then we'll get an after. Got my thing ready here. These first 15 buckets are kind of the partially broken down compost. And then the 25 behind that are wood mulch. So when I dig these up, I'm gonna dig a hole, drop fish carcass in the bottom of it, Amend it with a bit of this, mix in the regular stuff, and just like the forest floor, it'll just break down over time, make something richer than the rock and clay that's generally here. Put the plant in, finish burying it, and then uh, add some wood mulch to the top. 
I've got a couple different ideas about how to do this and the service berries are gonna like at least four hours of direct sunlight a day. You can see a lot of this stuff is pretty well lit up and some of this I plan on trimming back. There's just too much growth up there right now for what I want going on in this area but that'll be another project for another day. Ideally, yeah, I probably should have dropped some of those branches before I put in like that hugel mounder stuff, but I didn't, so I'll deal with it. The first thing I'm gonna do is chop back a bunch of this. You can see how grown up it is. I'm definitely gonna need some gloves. My hands are a little dry and cut up. Um, that was actually from a fish. In and out of the water lately, almost on a daily basis, bow fishing, so. They're dry, and I don't want to tear them up any more than I already have. So I'm gonna remove all this green stuff, and um, then start digging my holes. I'm not sure from here how much of a difference you guys can tell, but this whole pile here is what came out of there. A lot of this too, again, green briar. That stuff's hard to pull out. It's covered in thorns but pretty much across here to that tree and over. I cleared out all that stuff. I did that about two years ago too. So it's all grown back from there. Right now I'm gonna take the area I wanna grow in. You can see there's still grasses and other things. I'm gonna take the area I wanna plant in, grow in, and I'm gonna rake the leaves off of it to expose the soil so I can get the rest of the stuff out and then dig my holes. So this then exposes everything that was left, makes it kind of easier to pull out. You can see there's a number of, uh, oh, the wild blackberries, greenbriars, different grasses, hummingbird vine. But I'm gonna pull all this out first and I'm hoping I don't run into too many root issues because of those big trees. But just trying to get a clean, clean slate to start with. And then we're gonna heavily mulch it too because stuff like that, I think that's just a pile of pokeweed. I don't want that growing up and reseeding. So here's this part. Oh, baby girl, you're amazing. I didn't even ask for that, but I could use another shovel. Thank you. Wow. Guys, look at this. I saw these guys, I think both of these. It was actually yesterday, who knows in the video history how late ago it'll be but these male skinks boy while i was doing my uh compost redo go let them go back over there oops get a bug no. don't break his tail yeah, oh he bit his own tail, tail. wow go put those back because we like yeah. those guys and yeah. they're obviously doing good then they got competition oh my hard working girl got her shovel got her water bottle you ready to help huh well, there we go. Pretty much a clean slate, huh, child? Yeah? A lot of that grass and stuff out. Oh, let's see, six big holes. Are you ready? Dig six big holes? All right, here we go. I actually wanted to dig all my holes first, but I want to save this topsoil whatever isn't gonna fit in these, uh, back in these holes. So the gorilla cart's full. I've got like seven five gallon buckets full. And I keep finding these rocks, which we'll use for other projects. So I'm just putting them on the edge for right now. Since I wanna save this uh, topsoil, it's pretty good stuff actually. High clay content, but once the rocks are out, not too bad. Probably some of the easiest stuff to dig in on our property too. But I wanna start emptying those so I have somewhere to put the rest of the topsoil as I dig more holes. A lot of times with planting a tree, they'll say, make it like twice as wide as, um, as the pot and a bit deeper too. This is the Ozarks, guys. There's a lot of rock and clay. Without a backhoe or a big digging equipment, I ain't doing that, just not. If I was up in Wisconsin with just some nice soil, sure, whatever, sounds fun. But uh, this is more effort to get less of a hole, so we're gonna, we're gonna leave it here. What I'm gonna do is drop a fish in each of these and uh, add a little bit of that compost, then I'm gonna set the buckets on top of each of these, see kind of what height they're at, and decide how much more I add underneath it, and go from there. I'll, uh, I'll record some of this just so you guys can see.
Well, here we go. Three holes are filled. I generated two, four, six, eight, nine more empty buckets. And uh, I'll probably dig these next ones first, put them in, and then mulch them all. You getting them, baby? Thank you, daughter. Whoa. So I'm gonna do my three more. And then I'll come back. Okay, I'll check it out. As usual, taking longer than I'd like, but it is what it is. And I know what you're thinking. Those are thoughts, right? Yeah, I know. Let's see what's going on. Got all six of those five gallon buckets in right now. Still got those to do. So I'm gonna stagger them off here a little bit because these will grow up bigger and taller and these will grow up not as much. I don't mind if they're kind of almost run together-ish um, as time goes on, but oh, I'll dig those. And if I got six of these and seven of those, I'll just start a little bit past on each side and put them kind of spaced in between so they're alternating. And then we're gonna mulch this thing and see how it looks. Got the holes for this. Some of them are deeper because I gotta drop a carp carcass in there. Some of them are shallower because I'm just going to be putting a uh, pan fish in there. The children did a little bit of fishing recently. And I'll show you a little look in the yucky bucket. Yeah, there's some pan fish in there too. But they uh, caught those fish up. They cleaned them. And we had them for dinner last night. So, going to have the seven of these bush cherries in front of here. And eventually these bush cherries will bush out and those service berries will grow up and over. So, tuck the fish in, put the compost stuff in, fill them in, and then cover them in wood mulch. And I will say for those of you guys who are watching the video this long, um, if you're burying fish under your plants, that's good. But if you do it somewhere a dog or a raccoon or some other creature can dig them up, you're gonna plant your plant with that fish underneath there. They're gonna dig it up to get that rotting carcass out and your plant's gonna go flying. If people uh, cut out of this video already, they're not gonna get that information. They should have watched more. So good on you guys for still being here. All right, I'm gonna get these planted, show you what they look like. So I just knocked this one out of the pot and here's the main, you know, bush cherry stem. But look at all these little suckers it's sending up. You can see it came from the bottom here. It's just been looking for somewhere to go, reached the surface, and started going. And there's another one here, two more here, another one back here. So this could actually be split into six bush cherry plants right now, but I'm gonna let them kind of continue to go from here. But that's one reason that I wind up with so many of these, is how easy it is to propagate. If you look down here far enough, there's roots on here. I could separate this little guy, put it in its own pot, and that's what I did last year with these guys. So, pretty excited that I can just make my own plants that easy, put in a whole row, just because I used to have one. Now we have all seven bush cherries planted in front, all six of the service berry clusters, because a lot of them got multiple, you know, ones sprouting out of there. The only thing left for me to do, see if this is enough mulch or if I need more. Now I had extra compost, so that's still there. Got a good supply of empty buckets, and now I got a bunch of soil, which I can use. Happy about that. But we'll see how far this goes and see if I need to get some more and add it. But this was a big project, and I'm happy to be kind of uh, finishing it up because I was hoping, since I still got kayaks and bows in the truck, that I might be able to shoot a couple more carp today. Shot some nice ones yesterday. We'll see. So based on how this mulch is going, he's already had enough to get more. Bugger's gonna grab this pitchfork in a bucket. You gotta take this pitchfork too, Bug. See it? Yeah. Here you go. You gotta pull this with you. Really, you're gonna get three buckets and a pitchfork? Dude, you're an overachiever. So they're gonna start filling up. 
I'm gonna unload all this and then I'm gonna run it by them to pick up the next batch, right? Yeah. This is gonna look nice. Well, let's try that again. Think it'll be enough? Yeah. Do you think it'll be enough? Yeah. See what happens. Well, you boys are right. That was the load of mulch I needed to complete this. Now over time, this will just break down and turn into a rich soil as well. So we'll just keep adding mulch when we're able to. For now, it's kind of a weed barrier. You can see that all our plants are sticking through. Uh, monster truck there is giving them a good water. I may put a, a ring of rock around here just to prevent kids from stepping through this, but they should realize from the looks of it that it's where it needs to be, that this is you know something special that we've been working on. And I think, child, what do you want to do? Go bow fishing. Go what? Bow fishing. And try to do what? Shoot carp. All right, you ever shot a carp before? No. Okay. I've only shot suckers. Only suckers, all right. Bugger, if we went bow fishing, would you come follow me in a kayak? Yeah. Excuse me? Yeah. Excuse me? I said yeah. I know, but what should you say? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. See, see the difference? Do you know Proverbs 2011? I think so. Even? Even a child is known by his works, whether... Known by his doings? No, his doings, whether his work be pure or whether it be right, something yeah, like that. Pretty close. Right. We'll keep working. I think it was whether it be good, whether it be right. Do you remember Monster Truck? I don't. Well, thankfully we still got a written copy of the body, Bible <laughs> while we continue to write it on our hearts. Same, um, yeah, comment below. She says if you know Proverbs 2011. Is that what she said? No, I said I'm copying it down. Oh, you're yeah. copying. If, you're copying it. If they know, they can. <laughs> yeah, she said she said she was copying it down because part of their penmanship is to copy the Bible into notebooks, right? Excellent. So he's giving this a good soak. It also might rain soon. 40% or 40% chance on Sunday anyway. And guys, these, I don't know if I mentioned earlier, these have been in buckets since 2017. So they're gonna be happy to grow here. Uh, red pepper, run over by that one there, just to show people how tall those are that I planted last year. Right behind that first fence. Yep. So that plant right there, can you give it a shake gently so people can see how the top of it wiggle? There we go, that plant there. That's how tall that one is right now. So. Bugger, this is to provide food for you guys in the future. Did you know that? Yeah. All right. Well guys, that's it for this video. Um, one more way to get rid of dead fish. Pretty much, uh, we got a lot of ways to do it around here. That's one more. And now we're gonna go try to make some more dead fish, right? Yes. We'll let you know how we do. <laughs> Pop out. Thank you for watching. Thumbs up!